Alarm 88 on the Alpha I spindle amplifier indicates a failure of the external cooling fan mounted on the heatsink. When the spindle lamp faults out for a bad external fan, it does it in two stages. When it first detects a fan problem, the amp goes into a warning state, and if the fan issue hasn't self-corrected within one minute, it goes into an alarm state. The word fan flashes in the status bar when the CNC detects that a spindle lamp is in the warning state. While the spindle amplifier is in the warning state, the servo amplifiers are still powered up and able to move the machine around. The SP9088 alarm indicates that the amplifier has moved into the alarm state over the fan and all of the amplifier units immediately become not ready. The machine can no longer move. Unless you know precisely where your spindle amplifier is, it's not a bad idea to access the electronics cabinet with power on, safely, and look at the status displays of the units while the alarm is occurring. You are looking for the unit that is displaying a 88. To define safely, the motor amplifiers are in the electrical cabinet and opening the cabinet with power applied potentially exposes you to danger. In order to accurately troubleshoot the exact cause of this alarm, you will need to have power applied to the equipment. Don't attempt to perform anything discussed in this presentation if you are not both fully qualified to do so and have the equipment owner's permission to do so. Once you are done troubleshooting and before performing any maintenance, follow all plant safety and lockout procedures. These procedures should include releasing all energies related to the maintenance procedure performed. If you have an 88 on your spindle drive, the external fan isn't turning the speed it should be. It might be turning 0 RPM, or it might be turning a few hundred RPM under where it should be. Regardless, the amp is not happy with the fan on the heatsink. The heatsink is mounted on the back of the spindle amplifier and goes through the wall that the amp is mounted on. On some machines, you might be able to look down from the top of the machine and see the backside of the amplifiers, but let's just assume you can't see the fan without removing something. Unlike the internal fan, you will need some tools. The one tool you will definitely need is a screwdriver. Do yourself a favor and make sure it is a Japanese industrial standard tipped screwdriver. At a quick glance, JIS and Phillips appear to be the same, but a close look reveals that their design is slightly divergent. This difference makes it easy for Phillips screwdrivers to strip out JIS screw heads when they are screwed in tight. Conveniently, JIS tips work great in Phillips screws, so if you've noticed problems with stripping out screws when working on Asian-built equipment, you might want to consider changing out your Phillips screwdrivers for Japanese industrial standard versions. The latest series of amplifiers have a diagnostic that shows you the fan speed. CNC Diagnostic 1726 reports the RPM reading of the fan. Diagnostic 1727 is for larger amplifiers that have two external fans. If you don't have those diagnostics on your CNC, it just means your amplifiers are older models. Another handy feature of newer drives relates to this external fan you need to get to. Previously, the amplifier had to be removed to access the external fan. Newer models can remove the fan without removing the amplifier. To determine which amplifier you have, first remove the internal fan. The internal cooling fan and its housing lift right off of the top. In order to get the fan housing out, you must squeeze these two tabs to release it. Now that the internal fan is out of the way, look at the back wall of the spindle amplifier through the hole that removing the internal fan created. You might have to get a little creative by taking a picture if there isn't room for you to see. If all you see is yellow plastic on the back wall, a spot for your finger to hook onto, and a ramp to slide the fan out on, good news! No need to pull the amp out. If the back wall looks like bare aluminum and you can see all the components inside of the amplifier, you'll need to uninstall the spindle amplifier to get to the external fan. Depending on the size of the amp, there are one or two screws at the top and bottom of the amplifier holding it to the wall. To remove the external fan without uninstalling the amplifier, loosen the screws that are shrouded in plastic. The screws are captive, so don't expect them to come out completely. Screws on top can be reached from above the amplifier. Screws on the bottom are reached through the front wall of the amplifier. Look for the access hole between the DC link bus bars. 
It is now time for a tip on how to achieve a longer life. There is an LED between the bus bars. If that LED is lit, it means that there is voltage waiting to punish you for putting a metallic object next to its two neighbors, the DC Link bars. Please make sure the DC Link is entirely discharged before trying to get the fan out. Once the screws for the fan are loose, grip the plastic loop and pull toward the front of the amplifier. The external fan will slide out through the inside of the amplifier. Once you have the fan out, there are a few things that you can check for. Is the fan physically blocked or filthy? Cleaning it up may fix it. Try to reseat the fan modules. Maybe it's a bad connection. The signals for the external fan rely on the internal fan because it connects to both the external fan and the logic board. The logic board on the front of the amp that has all the connectors plugging into it is removable. Try to reseat it. If it's still not working, it looks like you need a fan. Replace it. If you've replaced the fan and it's still not working, and you have other spindle amplifiers, see if they have the same logic board by verifying the part numbers. If you're comfortable, try swapping the boards to verify the logic board is the issue, or replace the amplifier. The fan and the metal plate it is mounted on are two separate parts. The part number of the fan will probably start with A90L, and chances are good the part number is printed on the fan. If it isn't, contact our part sales department, give them the part number of your servo amplifier, it's that AO6B number on the label at the top of the amp, and they'll locate the part number for you. We're standing by if you need any help. Call 888-326-8287, press 2 for CNC, and then press 2 for technical support. To reach the parts sales department, press 2 for CNC, then 1, and 1 again.